Yo, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a brand new video which is going to be um, a how to improve your Depop, um, your Depop sales and make sales quicker, make more money faster obviously um, because that is normally most people's goal on Depop, uh, well certainly my goal anyway um, and I thought just using my experience I can give you some tips. Um, so I like to break this down to three parts. Um, these three parts are pictures, uh, description, and uh, yourself. Um, so we'll start off with pictures. Um, pictures, the, you may think this is pretty self-explanatory that you want to have really good and clear pictures. Um, if you go on to Depop, uh, you will scroll down and you'll see a variety of different pictures. You'll see people who have really blurry pictures, really dark pictures, and then you have people who have really light pictures, really nice pictures with white backgrounds, maybe a bit of like greenery, like this random plant in the background. Um, you never know, but just people have all different types of pictures. But um, what I would say is if you're looking for some inspiration on how to do pictures, um, go on to explore page and look at what people are doing for their pictures. People will usually either have a white background or like a clear background, or as I said, a bit of greenery, something like that, or people will be wearing it. Um, the problem with what I do is I buy and sell different clothes in different sizes so I can't wear everything, whereas I know a lot of people buy and sell clothes that are their size, or I know a lot of, a lot of girls, if they sell like men's clothes and they tend to fit them, um, but yeah, I can't do that, so I don't. The way that I do my pictures, I'll put one on the screen now. Um, basically, um, I am gonna be doing a tutorial. I've had people ask me for this, and I also did a poll, and a lot of people wanted to see it, um, how I edit my pictures. So I'm gonna be doing like a start to finish um, how I edit my pictures, and like kind of some ideas on what, what you wanna do to be able to edit yours like the same way. Um, I'm not saying by any means this is the best way to post your pictures, it's just currently what I'm using. Um, I've gone through a lot of different pictures in my time, like different uh, setups that I've used. Um, if you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I kind of had, um, I originally started on this door behind me, I had a hanger on the door, uh, and then I kind of went to a wall and then some other stuff. Um, so yeah, but I think definitely what I'm doing now is the best I've had it, and I think it looks really, really good, personally anyway. Um, and I think it really improves your your um, your sales a lot, which is obviously why it's in this video. So yeah, make sure you have a good quality pictures, that's the first thing. You wanna have um, a similar background. I would say if you can, have the same background for all of your pictures. Um, so when people click on your profile, it looks really professional. I'll put a screenshot of my page. Um, if you don't follow it, make sure you do follow that. It's at Josh Mush if you're interested. Um, obviously, don't feel like you have to follow it because you don't, but yeah. If, if you would, then I would be greatly appreciated. Um, but if you look at my page compared to, like, say, some other people's pages, I think it looks quite nice. Um, I don't have anything in my description as of yet because um, my bio, sorry, because I just I don't really think that's that necessary. I used to have some stuff and I just thought I'd just take it out just for a change. Um, but if you look at my pictures, they all have the same background. They all kind of follow a different sort of feed. Um, and I think it just makes it look a lot more professional if it looks like you're going onto a shop page instead of just a random person's like Instagram or something, if you get what I mean. Um, so yeah, I think the same background of each picture looks really, really nice. Um, you wanna have good lighting. I know a lot of people can't, like they don't have access to good lighting. Um, and believe me, I don't, I don't use lighting when I'm taking my pictures. Only lighting I use is um, the natural light from outside um, and then also if the picture I feel like it needs to be enhanced a little bit I do edit them sometimes um, I use uh, VSCO for or VSCO however you want to pronounce it for mine but there's so many apps out there I pretty much just use uh, the brightness um, because what I do is I don't include the background sometimes um, in order to get the correct color of the actual garment and make sure that it has like um, it has uh, balanced lighting across the whole thing. Um, I feel like you can't, um, like certain bits don't turn out how you want them to go. So if you just um, go, you put it in an app quickly and just uh, enhance the brightness or um, make it a bit sharper or include like uh, increase the clarity or something like that, then it can make it look a lot better um, and the quality of the picture a lot nicer. Because uh, you obviously want to have pictures that accurately represent what you're selling. You don't want to sell, take a picture of something and then wear it loads, ruin it, and then um, upload the picture when it was brand new. Because obviously that's that's not going to get you very far. Um, and then finally, what I would say is um, you want to, if your product is something that's like a high value, like um, Stone Island Moncler, Canada Goose, something. These brands all have a certain thing which uh, clarifies 
all like authenticates them. Um, so in Stone Island, you've got the Certi logo. Um, for uh, Canada Goose, it has a little holographic. Um, I'm gonna maybe do a couple of like uh, how to legit check certain brand videos. If you'd be interested, let me know. Um, but yeah, also just a lot of brands have this, and you want to get to if you're selling the brand, you want to get to know what these are. Um, so yeah, make sure that you have post a photo of what the actual like to show that it's authentic. The saves people having to ask you, um, and it once again speeds up the process of selling that product. Um, if you're selling something like Stone Island, which has a Certi logo, which is uh, if you don't know what it is, is basically um, a I actually have. If I get a piece now, it's there. It looks like this. If you can see that, I'm not sure if that's focused or oh, because I haven't. You can see it like that anyway. Um, but yeah, basically, it's got a special code um, for each product uh, to make sure that it is what it is and it is what it says. It is. And you can put it into the Certi logo app, uh, and this basically tells you whether it's authentic or not. Um, my suggestion is cover up part of it so it shows that you've got the Certi logo, but it doesn't show what it is. Reason you do that is because if lots of people keep putting your um, the QRL code or the actual, uh, I think it's the CLR code um, for the uh, Certi logo into the app, then it kind of gets a bit confused at who's got it, and it can sometimes bring up like false results, uh, saying like this is a duplicate or something because obviously it thinks other people have it. So yeah, it's just a tip. Anyway, I've waffled on about pictures way too much. Uh, it's very simple. Um, good quality pictures, good lighting, make sure you show it's authentic and um, have the same background for your whole feed. Um, I could have just said that in 30 seconds, but I waffled on. Next thing, description. Your description needs to be uh, accurate. Obviously, you want to be making sure that people know what it is um, and if it has any flaws, make sure people know because if you don't put it, it's going to come back to bite you. You may sell it and think, yes, I've got an extra 10 quid for that and I was expecting, but then somebody uh, files a dispute with PayPal and says that's not what I described, then you'll lose all the money for it and uh, chances are you might even lose the product. So, um, Make sure you just explain, be honest. It really, really goes a long way because if you get a really bad review, it could ruin, like, a, it could, like, really hinder your sales in the future. And I think that's just, like, one of the main parts that you just need to build your reviews, but we'll get onto that later on. Um, next up, have competitive pricing. Um, if you have competitive pricing, obviously you're going to be competing with other people in that same market. If you don't have competitive pricing and your pricing is way higher and way overpriced, then you're just going to be wasting your time selling that product. Um, the way I like to think about it is um, you want to be selling the product for the price that you want. Don't lower yourself too low to a price that you're not comfortable to sell it with, but don't raise it too high to a price that is very optimistic. Um, but also at the same time, you've got to be pretty, um, you've got to have a good knowledge about like kind of what you can sell it for. Whereas, so for me, the, what I mean by that is for me, I can sell products for a little bit, maybe a little bit more expensive because I have the reviews, I have the um, the trusted, I have like that trusted seller, I have that reputation. I and mean, then that kind of adds a lot of value on Depop because people will pay a bit more for somebody who they know they're going to get the product off. Whereas if you have a product that's like a um, lot, lot cheaper, it may be completely legit, maybe 100% authentic, but um, they may have put it as something. But if somebody, they may not trust the person because they may be like, why is this so cheap? This person's got no reviews. I'm not going to buy from them. Um, so yeah, I would say just um, know how much you can charge yourself. As I said, I can charge a little bit more. Um, I tend to start my price high and lower it down. That's what I'd recommend you do. Start it a bit above the price that you want. Um, that means if you get any offers, that's great. Um, and then slowly lower it down um, the, over a few days, but don't like if it doesn't sell for over one day, lower it completely. Definitely just lower it over time, slowly, slowly, uh, until you get to a price. But as I said, don't sell it for something that you're not comfortable to sell it with, because that just wastes, like that's just not what you want. Right guys, so the next thing is that you don't want to set your price for one pound. You may see a lot of people, if you search for things, um, set their item to one pound and then uh, they say send me offers. Uh, personally, I've tried this, it doesn't work. It may work for some things, it may work for some people, but just for me, it doesn't work and it really helps. Um, it just really helps to slow down sales, which is obviously the complete opposite of what you want. Um, if you want to have, um, the, re the reason this is bad basically is because if you're putting something for one pound, you get a lot of people sending you really low ball offers and just something that you, doesn't, you don't want. 
my best um, my best solution to this or my best like advice for you is to put your item at a price above what you want as I said before you want to put it a bit above what you want so if you get any offers that's great um, and then over time you lower it down of what you can so what you can actually what like what you're comfortable selling it for is what I mean um, so people know that what you people know the price that you're looking for whereas if you put it at one pound people that have no idea what you're looking for they can probably have a guess they probably know what it's worth but they're still going to send you really low ball offers and honestly it's just time consuming replying to these pointless messages that you just don't want to be spending time um spending time uh, replying to and the obvious thing about setting it as one pound is people can't buy your product straight up whereas sometimes um, if you want to have really fast sales, obviously the quickest way to do it is about even having to talk to the person They just straight up buy it like on a store um, If you have it like that, then if you have it at one pound, they can't buy it Whereas if you have it at an actual price that you're happy to sell for then people can buy that um, And that's just obviously good all round I mean the last thing about description is you want to be keeping your description to the key details only keep it brief You don't want to be waffling on like me um, like I mean like me in this video because obviously I'm waffling on um, you, you want to just keep it I would say size colorway um, Condition and if it's got any defects and if it has got defects make sure you let them know what it is um, And usually that is all I'll put if it's a size and and it's like say for instance size large But you know if it's small like Stone Island for instance um, fits a size down usually um, or if it's just something that's just shrunk over time which I have then just make sure you let them know what it is um, and let them know that the actual true size that it fits because so you just don't have any problems when they actually receive the item um, right so that's description um, to round up that just say you want to have an accurate description you want to have competitive pricing you want to move your price down over time don't set your price to one pound and keep your description brief because that just makes things a lot easier finally you um what i mean by you is just you i like i don't know how else to describe that you just want to it's all about you this part as you can probably tell by now um so you want to build reviews you need to build reviews because in order to build reviews you have to make sales and I know it seems a little bit like to improve sales you have to make sales but you do like it's just how Depop works and how like eBay works if you have if you have reviews and you have feedback behind you then you have things to back up on it's like um, I, I don't really I can't even give like an analogy to this or anything the same it is just what it is um, and it makes more sense if you have your buying off somebody you'd rather buy off someone with 400 reviews than you would if they got no reviews or a couple of reviews um just makes sense you need to build your reviews um and what i would suggest by doing this is making sure your purchases are through depop i know this can be annoying because of the 10 percent fee that you have to pay but if you want to um if you want to avoid the 10% fee um, on the whole thing and you don't want to get banned because a lot of people are getting banned um, so don't ask for PayPal through um, DMs if you want to do that watch my last video or my video a couple of videos ago which basically ran through to avoid getting banned on Depop um, and yeah just watch that um, you want to constantly be checking your messages and constantly be on Depop. If people are messaging you and you're taking a week to reply, then they're not going to want your products anymore. Chances are um, they're going to have found something else, another item that they might have wanted as well, um, and they're going to spend their money. So you just don't want to be wasting time. You want to be checking your Depop. It doesn't have to be every five minutes, it doesn't have to be every 10 minutes, but maybe like every hour, every couple of hours, or just at least a few times a day to make sure you've got no. Um, no messages and no offers coming in and as I said you don't want to miss up on the sale because that just once again slows down the sales um, you also want to be um, patient because and what I mean by patient is you want to just wait for things to sell things will sell um, everything what well, I say everything sells in Depop a lot of things sell um, especially if they're kind of stuff that people are after if they're just random things then maybe not they might not sell it as quick but people will buy things so you just need to be patient about that don't set your price really high and then it not sell and then lower it down to a stupidly low price when you could just be patient and wait a little bit and get more money for it but i think it's just the best way to be you just gotta be patient things will sell um and then finally, um, you want to have good customer service and post things fast. I mean, I know that's two things and I said finally, but it doesn't matter about that. Um, you want to be posting items fast. So I usually tend to post them the next day. Um, 
like a try and post them the next day anyway and i would um i'm gonna do a video about um kind of how to avoid like avoiding getting scammed or don't get scammed um and what i mean by this is you want to be posting things tracked basically because i got done over recently and if i posted a track then i wouldn't have um but yeah that's just something you just learn over time and hopefully i can help you with that but yeah try and post as quickly as possible and always let the buyer know when you're posting or when the item is going to arrive to them so they're not like if there's any delays people would rather know than have to just wait and assume because then they might open a paper dispute and uh, good communication um, I mean good customer service if they got a problem be like be all right about it and just kind of talk to them about it don't just be rude because then you won't get anywhere but honestly um, the key thing, I know I said finally before, but the key thing is you want to refresh your items. If you don't refresh your items, then um, your products are not going to be at the top of the searches. And for something that's quite common, um, like Stone Island for instance, you if you don't refresh your items, your items will get pushed all the way down below everything else, and they're a lot harder to find. Um, but what I mean by refresh your items is click edit and then click save. This basically just up fresh, uh, refreshes it, it puts it at the top of your personal um, your personal page and it will also put it on the top of the search. Um, it won't refresh it on the on people's feeds, but it will be at the top of the search when people search for that thing. And as I said, at the top of your profile, when people click in your profile, whatever you've refreshed quickest or I mean most recent, then it will be at the top and you can do it that way. But that is what I definitely recommend to do. And those are my four, uh, three points like that I've split this down into. Um, pictures, description and price is one thing and you yourself. Um, I hope these kind of tips help for you guys and I hope that like, you guys have some more luck selling items on Depop. I know this has been a really, really long video and I apologize for that. Um, but I just wanted to kind of fully explain everything instead of just quickly rambling through it um, and not actually getting my point across. So if you did like the video, make sure to leave a like. If it did help, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to comment your Depop down below and I will give it a follow and other people can follow it in the comments as well. Um, also, finally, if you like the hoodie that I'm wearing, this is by my own brand, Vimo Clothing. Uh, these actually released the other day. Um, they, if you're interested, check out the link in the description to the website and the Instagram. And, um, and yeah, I'll see you next time, guys. Make sure to subscribe if you're new and uh, see you next time. Peace.